Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman, and this is Synergia, which is a software recreation of the Digital Keyboard's Synergy Synthesizer. If you're not familiar with the Synergy, I would invite you to check out this video I made on the topic. And this up here, this is Synergize. This is a patch editor for the Synergy. This video is the first in a series of tutorials on the Synergy architecture and using Synergia and Synergize. In order to load up and edit a patch, I first need to click the VRAM button. Then I can click Connect and Synergize. I say Connect to Synergy. If I had a real Synergy, I could talk to it over the serial port. But right now, I'll connect to that instance of Synergia I have open. And then I can click Voicing Mode. There we go. There doesn't seem to be a text search feature for navigating your file tree, so I put 1-1 one, one in front of my Synergy voice library to make it pop up first. Here I'm going to go to Voices, let's go to 001, and I'm going to pull up 10C, whatever that is. Actually, no, let me pull up 10E. There we go. So this particular sound has four oscillators. A Synergy patch can have between one and 16 oscillators, although I don't recall seeing any factory patches that use above eight. And most don't use more than four or sometimes six. So let me talk about the notation you see here under patch type. If you see a plus, that indicates the output of two oscillators being added together, obviously. The tilde indicates that one signal is frequency modulating another signal, although I should mention that like in the Synclavier and the Yamaha FM instruments, the Synergy actually implements FM synthesis using phase modulation. And actually, would people be interested in me pulling out the Wacom graphics tablet and running through the equations that explain that? If so, leave a comment below. So both in this patch type entry and in the little graph over here, you see that oscillators one and two are having their outputs added, and that signal is frequency modulating oscillators three and four, and the outputs of those carriers are being added together to create the sound. Now, there's also this list here for oscillators five, six, and seven, but this is only a four oscillator patch, so you can ignore that, although there is a subtle issue here that I'll come back to. Let's hear that patch again. Now let's try a purely additive patch. So this is treating all four oscillators as carriers being added together with no FM. Let's see. Here I'll have one modulating two and three modulating four. So this is kind of like a couple of synclavier timbres. So here we'll add the first three oscillators together create a signal to modulate oscillator 4. Here's one modulating 2, and then 3 and 4 by themselves. And let's see. Here I'll have three carriers, but each of them is being modulated by oscillator 1. And here I now have a stack where 1 is modulating 2, and that signal is modulating 3 and 4. And let's see, here's a stack where it's just a sequence of modulators. <laughs> okay, now let me talk about something that's a little confusing at first. Let me set this to this patch type here. That's a set of modulator carrier pairs. Now, I only have four oscillators in this patch. So let me hit the plus sign a few times and add some more oscillators. Now, the thing you might note is that these things that were added, these are just being treated as carriers that aren't being modulated. It's not modeling the particular structure you see up here. Now, let me select something else and let me select that again. And now it is indeed looking like the structure we expected from here. What's going on is that what's shown in this patch type isn't necessarily the actual algorithm. The actual algorithm is contained in this information down here, where you see patch, 
freak, add, and out, and the numbers in here or the lack of numbers, that's what defines the algorithm. This patch type is just a set of macros that will conveniently fill in these entries for you. But if I were to go in and change, say, this here, and I were to get rid of this here, and I were to get rid of this here, you'll see that the thing in the upper right is indeed changing, but this patch type isn't being updated. So when you select a patch type, it fills in these entries, but if you change any of these entries, then this patch type you see here may no longer be valid. Now, as you just saw, if we change the numbers here in this little matrix down here, it does try to update the plot up here. But again, this is not updated. This is just basically a set of presets to fill this out for you. But the moment you change a number here, don't trust this anymore. Okay, for now, let me get rid of those extra oscillators. And let me also set this to be an additive patch so I can talk about what these numbers actually mean. There are two registers that each oscillator can send its output to. You have register one and register two. So register one is usually used to add up signals. Register two, on the other hand, is usually used to pass FM information. So we'll talk about that in a second. So using this out entry here, you can, of course, set whether you're going to write the output of that oscillator to register one or register two. The frequency input is for frequency modulation. So you could set that to one or two if you want to take FM input from register one or register two. As you might expect, the add input will take the output of your oscillator and add it to whatever the contents of that register are before writing that to your output register. So in this additive patch, the output of oscillator one gets put in register one. The output of oscillator two gets added to the result of register one and put back into register one. And you keep doing that. And then register one is very special. The last value to be written to register one is the actual output for that note. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that there is an add register one included with this very first oscillator. This is how the Synergy handles polyphony. If there's no other notes playing and you play a note, then register one defaults to zero. But if there have been other notes playing, this register is set to the results of the previous notes that were playing. So you're responsible for handling polyphony. I'm going to play a four note sustained arpeggio. Now I'm going to play the same notes, but I'm going to take out this add one on oscillator one. You couldn't see me do it, but I was trying to play all four notes. So by taking that out, I broke the polyphony. So let's take a look at an FM configuration. So here, oscillator one takes its output and puts that in register two. And oscillator two, which is one of the carrier, actually has two inputs. It's going to add register one in order to handle polyphony. The output goes to register one. And it takes its frequency input for FM modulation from register two. Then for oscillator three, it's not taking any inputs and it just spits its result in register two. And then to frequency modulate oscillator four, it's reading register two. And here it's going to add register one, which contains both the results of all the previous notes and the result of oscillator two. And then it takes that result and puts it in oscillator one. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through all of these, but let's take a look at a couple more. So here we have a single carrier, and we want to add the results of oscillators one, two, and three. So this is fairly natural. We output to register two, we add what's in register two to the output of oscillator two, which lands in register two, and then we do that again for oscillator three. And then oscillator four, the carrier, naturally takes its frequency input from register two, 
All we need to add here is register one, not to handle any other carriers in the patch, just to handle polyphony, and then we output that to register one. Let's take a look at this stack here, where you've got one, two, three, and four. And so here it very naturally just cascades one oscillator frequency modulating the other. Okay, let's do one more. Here we have an FM pair where oscillator one is outputting to register two, and that's been used as the FM input on oscillator two. The result of that is added to what's in register one and output to register one. And then the rest of this is just adding via register one to handle the rest of this additive structure. Note that because I only have two registers, my configurations can't be completely arbitrary. Also, because the Synergy processes these oscillators top to bottom, we can't do feedback the way you can on a Yamaha synth. Now, interestingly, the documentation for the Krumar GDS refers to a register 3 and a register 4. I don't know why those wouldn't be available on the Synergy if they're available on the GDS, because the basic digital oscillator hardware is the same between both machines. If you have any insight on this, leave a comment below. Okay, let's talk about some of these other things. Let me go back to an additive patch. Here we can include harmonic numbers for our different oscillators. So let's say we were to set this to octaves. So harmonics one, two, four, eight. Let's see, we have these different D tunes. There's random one and random two. And oh, let's see, okay, so there's random amounts, and then there's numeric amounts. Let's see, I have random one, two, three, four, five, six. No, there's no six. Anyway, I guess you can go look up what those are. Let me pull out all of the oscillators except for one. I'll turn this t tune back down to zero. Let me turn the gain to 100. So that's the triangle wave. Here's the sine wave. And technically, this triangle wave isn't a pure triangle wave. It's just the first, third, and the fifth harmonics. So no seventh, no ninth, yada, yada. Another thing I want to show you about this harmonic number is they don't have to be integers. I can specify this in terms of semitones. So if I put S6 here, one of these oscillators is now a tritone above the other. And I could maybe put S7 here and have a perfect fifth. Or I could put S1 here and have that be a minor second above. So something we should probably talk about in the future are the envelopes. Here's the Tim patch by Wendy Carlos. So each oscillator can have its own separate frequency and amplitude envelope. And actually, for the frequency envelope and the amplitude envelope, each of those envelopes is actually a composite of two different envelopes that it can crossfade between based on things like velocity or key position. Oh, and each envelope can have up to 16 stages with loopable segments. So it's very flexible.